Okay, so there are two things that stand out in these data logs from the pull we just did. The graph up above is not controlled, and what we are seeing is just constituted as noise and or vibrations, and this you can tell because the green line below it is not control percentage, and it drops. Once it acknowledges any noise or vibration, and the ECU is able to decipher that it is not detonation, it will stop holding back ignition timing and just allow full ignition timing, full cam, let the tune do what it does because it's a safe tune. Chat. Would a performance tune done properly still show knock limit and knock control values when logging race conditions? Yes. Even a properly done performance tune will often show some knock noise, knock limit hits, or knock control activity, especially under race conditions. But here's the key. Not all knock activity in logs means something is wrong. Let's break it down. What you should expect in a good performance tune. 1. Knock noise, knock event. Modern ECUs like K-Pro, Hondata, etc. constantly detect engine noise in the knock frequency range. High RPM, aggressive cam angles, stiff mounts, solid rods, forged pistons, or lightweight valve train parts all make normal background noise. Knock sensors pick this up, so the ECU uses a knock control algorithm to decide if it's real knock or not. This means knock noise in logs detonation. What matters is whether knock count increases and if timing is pulled. Knock limit tuning. A performance tune often runs ignition timing close to the knock limit because that's where power is best. The knock limit means you're just below actual knock. Tuners tune to MBT, maximum brake torque, or just short of it. You might see knock control dip, even to 0%, as in your case, or float slightly up down, which is expected. Tuning close to the limit, its occasional minor knock equals more power, if controlled. 3. Race conditions more sensitivity. Under track or high load pulls, higher intake, intake T, engine coolant temps, EET oil temps, oil temps, more higher dynamic compression, less cooling time between pulls. This increases the chances of knock, so even with a clean tune, you might see momentary knock count, knock control percent dip or rise slightly, knock retard of 1 to 2 degrees for safety. When it's not okay, if you see knock count rising repeatedly in the same RPM or load range, knock control staying elevated, e.g. above 20 to 30 percent after WOT. ECU consistently pulling timing, plugs showing peppering or damage. Then it's too close to the edge. Back off timing, reduce cam angle or rich in fuel. Nahar, summary. Scenario, good tune, bad tune, bad tune, knock noise, normal. Knock count, zero to one occasional, resets quickly, increasing often, knock control scent, zero to 10%, occasional dip to 0%, 30 cent plus and doesn't recover. Momentary, then restores. Persistent pull, cam, IAT, within expected targets, AFR too lean, IAT's high. Final takeaway. A proper race tune may still show knock-related activity, it's expected. What matters is how the engine and ECU respond to it. You're not trying to eliminate knock noise entirely, you're trying to control it, contain it, and stay under the threshold where damage starts. Let me know if you'd like me to help you set thresholds for knock control, or tailor a safety margin for your tune. Chat, is it possible to calibrate a tune where you get zero indication of knock count or knock control? If so, would that be practical? Great question. And the answer is layered with both yes and but. Yes, it is possible to tune for zero knock count and stable knock control, no dipping or climbing. But, and this is the important part, it may not be practical or optimal if you're building for performance. Let's unpack both sides. Yes, it's possible. You can create a very conservative tune where ignition timing is well below knock threshold. AFR is kept rich, more fuel equals lower temps. Cam angles are relaxed, less cylinder pressure. IATs and ECTs stay low. ECU knock sensitivity is well calibrated, not oversensitive. In this case, knock control percent remains high and stable, e.g. 55 cent plus in K-Pro. Knock count stays at zero. Logs look clean under all conditions. Ideal for Daily drivers, track prep phases, new engines during break-in, high load towing or extreme heat, but not practical for all builds. 
To keep not completely suppressed, you usually must give up power, retard timing below MBT, run richer AFRs, hurts fuel economy and may foul plugs, lose throttle response, sacrifice high RPM efficiency. This is not ideal for race builds, drag passes, road course use, enthusiasts trying to squeeze performance. Most high-performance tunes do flirt with the knock threshold on purpose to get the most power safely. Best practice, target controlled knock margin. Rather than aim for zero knock, tune to the edge of knock, then back off just enough. Let knock control be your safety net. Accept that brief occasional knock is fine if it's detected and corrected by the ECU, not increasing in count, not causing timing pull that lingers. Summary. Goal, can you tune out all knock? Practical, power impact, by the ECU. Daily driver, yes. Yes, mild. Race build, yes. Not optimal, noticeable. Break in tune, yes, doesn't matter. Tune for power, no, not 100%, yes, if controlled, balanced. Final thought, zero knock on logs is achievable. But ask yourself, are you building for clean logs or clean acceleration? If you're tuning with power and reliability in mind, the goal is not perfection on paper, but controlled combustion under fire. Let me know your goals and I'll help you dial it in. All right, so let's take a quick step back from knock control and knock detection and take a look at this RPM graph that is related to a failing throttle body position sensor. What I am using, I have been using, is the K-Pro V2 throttle body position sensor which is a contact oriented sensor and it uses a potentiometer to communicate with the ECU, giving it the position of the throttle body plate. Now, there are reports that for many people that state after engine heat soak, these potentiometer based throttle body position sensors go bad, especially on K swaps, being that we have stiff motor mounts, stiff suspension, we got headers that if they're not wrapped and you're not using heat shielding in many areas a lot of these sensors are going to become heat soaked and they don't perform as well vibration also fatigues these parts and they fail now here's an example on a previous data log where my tps signal completely cut off in the middle of driving and then it just kicks back in after a couple seconds <laughs> that's where i drew the line because the engine bay wasn't even heat soaked but here's a clip after the engine fully is warmed up and we have some heat soak now let's go back to the recorded data logs from the beginning of this video where we did that pull. We're going to zoom in on the RPM graph and we're going to notice not exactly the spikes, but we're going to notice dips in the RPM graph where that shouldn't be taking place when the throttle body is completely wide open. Now yes, we are also going to take in consideration that knock control percentage can pull back 2-3 to three degrees of ignition timing when knock detection is detected in any way, shape or form. However, halfway through, knock detection drops down to 0% which allows your tune calibration to operate at 100% and we still have fluctuations in the RPM curve. So this next TPS sensor we're going to look at is by K-Tuned. It has an aluminum casing and this is the Hall sensor style TPS. We also have the Acuity brand which has a good reputation. It has smooth response but it has a composite plastic casing and is mainly dedicated for non-modified ECUs, meaning a factory ECU. It has a wider spectrum for communication versus the aluminum K-tuned one is more dedicated for racing applications. So what we are looking to eliminate by switching to a hall sensor type throttle body position sensor is the dead spots from wear and tear, the uh, intermittent cutting off when engine heat soaking takes place and just the inconsistencies with vibrations and just wear over time. Now to keep this video short and not get too complicated, there's a lot more to come and I will be getting into ignition tables on the next video. So we're going to leave it at this and I'll talk to you guys when I see you next time.